All right, what I'd like to cover on this video is what is your responsibility on a weekly basis? What type of work is the student required to do each week? So on the left-hand side, you'll see right here in this section, it says get started week one, week two, week three, week four. So let's look at the get started first. <clears throat> so under the get started, it does cover the textbook. It goes over the course objectives. This is a requirement that you need to do. You must do the pretest. It's mandatory and you must do the core certification. Two mandatory items in the get started section. If you have not completed that, um, you will get a uh, courtesy message from Blackboard reminding you that this information must be submitted before the end of the first week. What's important here is the tech support information. There's two different numbers here. The reason why there's two different numbers, there's one number for the connect, which is your lab section. If there's any issues with the lab, you call this 800 number. If there's an issue with Blackboard in general, with any of the technology outside of connect, the McGraw-Hill, you contact this 855 number, okay? Whether it be an issue during exams, you can call them. <clears throat> They'll supply you with a ticket number. Just snap screenshots, um, be able to provide enough context and information so that they can uh, help troubleshoot it. Then there's uh, the course introduction this is where you get to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background, where you live, what inspired you to go to Kaiser, what your future vision is, where you see yourself with the next three to four years. Um, so, you know, your fellow classmates like to know who they're talking with on the discussion board. So that helps to connect the dots. You have access to the library and uh, online if you need to look at any journals or any research. And then there's information here that just tells you, hey, look, always read instructions, especially on exams. Make sure you read your instructions. Make sure if there's a tech issue, are you calling the Connect the McGraw-Hill or Blackboard, know the difference. It tells you to keep detailed information as to what steps you took or what didn't work. It just helps them diagnose what the issue may be. There's usually one or two glitches uh, each term. They're minor, everything's fixable. When it happens, just take a deep breath. If there's ever an issue on an exam and it logs you off or cuts you off, let me know. I can always <clears throat> reset the exam. Unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to start off where you left off it'll just reset the entire exam. And um, since all the exams are scrambled through test banks, it'll probably be a different exam, unfortunately, but there's just no, no other way to handle that. Um, it is user-friendly with the mobile app. If you have the Blackboard app or the Kaiser mobile app, um, you could use that also, also in terms of exams. Uh, you want to be using the uh, browser Chrome. Seems to be the most reliable. I think uh, Safari and Firefox may be second, third place. Uh, stay away from Chromebooks. They tend to be the most problematic right now is what we're seeing is some of the Chromebooks. So if you use Chrome, great. Chromebook, try and find another uh, alternative. Okay, so that's basically what you're covering in week one. Please read over the critical thinking section. Understanding what critical thinking is very important because you are applying that concept of critical thinking each week on the discussion board. I will cover discussion board basics in another short brief video tutorial. Let's go back now. So now that you've completed the getting started, now you can go to week one and week one, two, three, and four have the same moving parts, right? Each week, there's three main um, outcome measurement tools that we use. One is the lecture exam, which uses the lockdown browser. There's the lab quiz, which you do in McGraw-Hill through Connect. And then there's this discussion board. 
Those are three of the requirements every single week, okay? Each week, there's a fourth option that you could do, and that's the weekly summary. That's not required, it's an option. That for each of the four weeks. In, <clears throat> in week, in the getting started portion, there was a pretest, which is a requirement. In week four, there is a post test that you would do. The post test, the grade that you get doesn't necessarily count. We're not interested in that. We're just interested in measuring as a whole, what did you start with? What type of knowledge base? And how did that improve overall at the end of the four weeks? Okay, that's the one that counts as 5% of the overall grade. That's what we're really interested in. Okay, so let's look at week one. <clears throat> and you'll see, same moving parts, week one, two, three, and four. It starts off with the overview of what the requirements are in terms of reading the particular chapters. So you'll see in, uh, for this week, it's chapter one, also Atlas A, chapter two, three, and four. Here are the lockdown browser instructions. You can uh, click on this video here. You want to do the weekly discussion board that closes Sunday night at 1159 as does the weekly lecture exam closes Sunday at 1159, as does the virtual lab quiz, which is done through Connecta McGraw-Hill, closes at 1159 on Sunday. So you have all week to do that. You want to register on that first week by Tuesday for Connect and the APR, which is Anatomy and Physiology Revealed. For that, you can see the instructions in the week one virtual lab folder very clear outlined instructions as to how to do that. <clears throat> week one, the body orientation, cells and chemistry. Okay, and you also wanna look at Atlas A and Atlas B. This is in the Saladin book, uh, the lecture, the ebook. Atlas A is in the beginning for body orientation. Remember Atlas B is followed by after chapter 10. A lot of students get little tricked on that. <clears throat> there is the weekly summary that is optional, but it also has to be completed by 1159 Eastern Standard Time, of course. If you do them all and you get a perfect grade rate, each one is worth a uh, half a point, point uh, 0.5 percent. Overall, at the end, it can make a two-point difference on your overall average. The pretest is mandatory in week one, as is the certification is mandatory. Okay. What else do we have here? We move down to the lockdown browser, the monitor uh, practice quiz. Make sure that it's downloaded properly. Um, it'll walk you through the process to how to download it. Okay. Again, don't use Chrome. You're better off using uh, a different uh, browser. You want to use Chrome, maybe Firefox. Then you have the learning objectives. You can click on that to read them for week one. Reading assignments, some videos. These are all short, brief videos, tutorials that follow some of the more complicated topics in it. Make sure you're familiar with APA formats when you do your uh, discussion board post, which I'll cover in another video. You do have uh, a short, brief video on proper citation, okay? Make sure you watch it. Under lessons and resources, this is where you can find PowerPoints and publisher end of the chapter summaries from the publisher. Here's your McGraw-Hill week one lab. Remember you would click on that. You would uh, then take you to the overview for the first week. Here is the link to actually access your lab. And these are the instructions, how to register for Connect through Blackboard. Make sure you follow these. If it's a rented book, you're going to have to purchase it. Um, some students uh, use the two-week free trial and forget that it was a two-week free trial. And when they start week three, they have no access. And then they have to buy it anyway. So do it right, right? It's only done cheap if you do it right the first time. So make sure you, uh, you have... Uh, access from that from the very beginning. This walks you through the process as to how to do it. Please take the time. And then just to show you, when you click on the McGraw-Hill 
it'll take you to go to my X section. And then as I covered in another video, you can see that not only are the weekly quizzes here, week one, two, three, and four, this is where you would tap into your quizzes. At the end of the quizzes, make sure you click submit, right? That makes sure that it's graded. Here is your ebook. Here is an atlas to help you that has a lot of the interactive exercises. And then here's your APR, the cadaver dissection tool. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's go back. And we'll go back one more. Okay, so we're still in the week one. So after the lab, here is your lecture exam that is taken through the lockdown browser. If you try and open it up outside of the lockdown, it's gonna ask you for a password and there's no passwords. So the lecture exam, you wanna make sure that it covers chapters one through four and Atlas A. On the lab exam, I believe it's Atlas B it's going to cover some Atlas B, which is after chapter 10. <clears throat> you have an hour and 15 minutes at 825, multiple guests, questions. Uh, so it's plenty of time. So no worries with that. Underneath that is your discussion board. I will cover the discussion board basics in a separate video, but you can find the rubric and the weekly topics that you must choose from there. And here's the optional part, which has the weekly summary. Again, it's worth 0.5 if it's perfect. You must follow the rubric down here below. You must have four separate paragraphs clearly outlining the four different sections, the research section, the system check, applying the importance and the weekly self-reflection. The description for each paragraph is clearly outlined and the expectations are down here on the bottom. Okay, this is optional. It's not a requirement. When you're done, you're finished, perfect. Then you can go to week two. When you look at week two, it's gonna have the same moving parts. Week three will be the same. Here's the week two overview. There's your learning objectives, the reading assignment, a few videos to support. The lessons and resources have any PowerPoints if you wanna review any of those. And it also has from the publisher end of the chapter summaries that you can print up in Word format. Here's your discussion board. These are the topics for week two. And these are, I'm sorry, here are the topics for week two. And the rubric is the same for every single week for the discussion board. There's always three posts each week. I'll cover that in a separate video tutorial. After the discussion board, here's your lecture exam through Lockdown Browser. And once again, the McGraw-Hill Connect Lab portion. After that, if you choose to do the extra credit, then there's the weekly summary. You will have that same flow in week three and week four. I won't click on week three, but let's just look at the final week for week four. Again, overview, objectives, readings, lessons and resources. There are some videos to help you. They're short, two, three minutes each to help you with some of the more complicated information. There's your fourth week discussion board topics, the same rubric. Discussion board requirements do not change from week one to week four, they're all the same. There's your McGraw-Hill for your lab quiz for the fourth week. Here is the weekly summary, again, optional, not a requirement. And then there is the post-test at the very end. That is the flow for the entire course. Okay, we hope you found that uh, useful organized and structured for everyone.